Here goes my 78 yard shot. There's a little bit of a wind drift. So let's see where I get this. Hey guys, it's Dylan Late Season Hunter, and today we are going to talk about getting into 3D archery shooting. Now, I don't know a ton about it. Uh, this past weekend was my very first time at a 3D shoot, but I did learn a lot of things about shooting, uh, going to these events, uh, maybe things that really helped me feel a lot more comfortable actually going out there to shoot, and just kind of like what to maybe expect when 3D shooting. So yeah, no, it was just a ton of fun. I do want to say that the people who put on the shoot, the Upper Snake River Bowmen, uh, their club is amazing. Like if you're in Southeastern Idaho and you're trying to like, oh, I want to, to be part of an archery club, this club is great. I actually joined it this past weekend. Uh, it wasn't really hard to talk me into it. Some of the people that are actually like in the presidency that actually work with me. Uh, but they're just some outstanding people that they really put the club first, you know? That I think that's the big difference that I've heard about some archery clubs and things that I've been wanting to look into and be a part of. But they really are like, hey, this is a family, this is a, a group, this is a gathering, this is like an event for people who are wanting to hunt and shoot and feel comfortable hunting and shooting. Uh, and they just have so much knowledge and I was just really grateful to be a part of it. And so, yeah, I got a, a hoodie to kind of represent, you know, you know, but no, it was just a ton of fun. So yeah, this is, there's a lot of people there that really helped me feel comfortable and feel more confident in my shooting abilities. So that that's the thing I took away the most from this weekend. But yeah, so let's go and talk about some things I learned and how you might be able to learn a little bit as well. So yeah. All right, so we're here at where the shoot took place and I wanna talk about a few different categories of things that I am glad I prepared for, things I wasn't prepared for and things I can prepare for in the future. So things I'm glad I prepared for. One, I'm glad that I had a, a jacket. Uh, I got this the other day. This is the uh, cryptic uh, Jupiter jacket. It's uh, slightly waterproof, uh, which was great because at the shoot itself, it was a little bit rainy. And so having this, you know, having this slightly waterproof jacket definitely made it a little bit more comfortable. It was also like, it was big enough that I could put like a sweatshirt or my jacket underneath and I wasn't really cold. So having a jacket was really, really important to me for the actual day. So yeah, always looking at the weather really comes in handy. Another thing that goes along with the weather that I really am glad I prepared for uh, was wearing gloves. Now I've shot with some gloves, you know, a couple times. And the thing that really made it comfortable for me yesterday was having gloves like there's other people are walking around and they're putting their hands in you know up by their mouths and they're blowing into it trying to warm up their hands with their releases and me like i was just walking around and i just had these gloves on and they were great i didn't feel like i lost a lot of you know there wasn't anything that i really felt was unnecessary uh, like fabric wise, like I wasn't feel like I couldn't feel the bow right. I could actually, you know, I really just had a good grip with it. Uh, the gloves are also thin enough that when I put on my release, I could actually take and still have the same anchor point feel. And that just was so nice. So gloves were a huge thing. So if you aren't shooting in like always in areas that are really warm, like today, when I actually start to shoot some, I'll probably put on my gloves and I will shoot with them because they just are so nice. They make it comfortable. I don't have very good circulation in my hands from an accident when I was younger. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it meant a lot to me to actually have these gloves yesterday and I did not feel any uncomfortable, uh, like 
body aches, you know, from my hands getting cold. So gloves were just a must for me. And if you do have someone that has great circulation or you're like, oh no, I don't need gloves, good for you. Like I, I am very envious of you. But for me, gloves were a must for yesterday. And I'll definitely always keep a pair of these in my, my pack. Um, yeah. Speaking about that, I also brought a, a bag with me because I didn't want to be wearing my, my hip quiver uh, throughout the day because I'll be doing a lot of walking around, didn't know the environment. I felt it was a lot better for me to actually have a backpack. And it's just this bag right here. This is the Mystery Ranch. I think this is the Two Day Assault. Uh, it's a great bag, but you know, like I just put my quiver right here. I had my water bottle over here. Uh, this is the bag I'll probably be using to like scout and do uh, little scouting adventures with. Uh, just because it's so nice, it does have a really good pack system of you know adjusting the straps to really fit me better. Uh, it also has you know like the bottom waist, so it's a little bit more you know it has a lot more uh, comfort features to it. You know the thick padded straps. Um, but the other thing I really liked about it is if I needed to you know, keep extra stuff in here. Uh, this bag actually had this really nice big zipper pocket right here that kind of just like butterflies open. So if I need to get anything out of here, I could. So this is just gonna be a really important bag. And I'll probably talk about this bag another time uh, just because I didn't, this is still kind of set up from yesterday and it doesn't have a lot of what I'll be putting into it for like scouting stuff. So yeah, this is just this mystery ranch two-day assault but yeah no it was perfect for yesterday you know being able to carry stuff if I started to get hot I could shed a layer and put it in the bag uh yeah I I just because I didn't know what the environment was I have some gators in here uh had some snacks so this was just a really nice thing to have throughout the day that I could just take and oh here we go arrows you know put them behind me they're out of the way uh yeah so super nice to have uh, yeah, good bag. Now, the last thing that really made it easy for for me uh, was my rangefinder. Now, I do have a slider sight. We talked about that in another video. It's just the B3 Exact Rise Hunter. Uh, you know, it's great, and that's one of the main reasons why I got it was so that when I was out there. Uh, for the first round, it was a lot easier for me to, because I was actually like scoring to see what my score was. Uh, it was a lot easier for me to pull up my rangefinder and say, "Hey, this is, uh, you know, this is 46 yards. This is 50 yards. This is 75 yards." You know, it really it made a huge difference to have a rangefinder. Like we had a in my first group, we had a gentleman that didn't have a rangefinder, uh, and he was always asking for people like, hey, what's the range, what's the range? Which is, you know, it's totally okay. Like if you don't have a range finder, find someone that, you know, there's a group like, hey, I don't have this, I wanna get into it. Uh, you know, I wanna do this event. There's so many people out there that will allow you to just come and tag along with them uh, if you don't have little bits of gear, like a range finder, you know? However, with that being said, when we were out at shots where I think it was like, 79 yards or we had some that were like past 65 suddenly this guy lost a lot of confidence in his rangefinder so having like a rangefinder that can go up to you know like this one goes up to about 500 uh yards uh this rangefinder was perfect also what i really liked about this rangefinder was that i could act if the target was further away i could kind of like twist the the lens to be able to go oh that's actually what it is so really nice little feature about this this range finder. Plus it also has angles. And so if we're shooting down like, oh, we need to kind of think about that as well. Like how do you usually shoot? So having a range finder with a little bit of extra features, uh, it, it kind of, it made a difference for the day. And I noticed a big difference with it and I felt way more comfortable with that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about that really helped save the day was having one of these little arrow pullers. If you do not go to one of these events with an arrow puller, you might be in for a long day. Uh, this arrow puller really like for six bucks, it was the probably the most used thing that we use today, whether you know we got up to a target, we got to a target and you know there was something you know maybe stuck in it, like maybe an arrow had broken uh, to be able to pull it out. Uh, this 
being able to grab onto the arrow shaft and be able to pull it out of the foam because not every single target had the same foam, not every single target had the same wear. So you could shoot into one target one time and it'd be super easy to pull through or you'd get up to a target and it would take your entire strength to pull it out if you didn't have it. So this made a huge difference. If you are going to do any of these events, get an arrow puller. It's not, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of to need an arrow puller. Like it will save your hands, it'll save your day. Like it, get an arrow puller. Uh, I think, I think if I remember right, if you are looking for one, there should be a link down in the description below. <sighs> a little side plug. Now, Getting onto the things that I did not prepare for. Number one, walking through all this terrain, you need to make sure you have the proper footwear. Now I have, you know, I was gonna wear some boots uh, and I accidentally put on a different pair of boots that were okay, that, you know, typically I could walk around all day and be like, oh yeah, no, my feet are fine. But walking around in the mountains is a different story. You need to have proper footwear. It doesn't matter if it's just normal hiking boots. It doesn't matter if it's actual, like the boots that you use for hunting. It could be rain gaiters. It could be whatever. Just as long as it's comfortable enough that you can wear it for a long period of time in any sort of terrain. Like, yeah, I, by the end of the day, my feet were hurting. Uh, and you know, it, that's totally my fault. I should have been paying attention to the boots I put on, uh, when I originally put on my shoes in the morning, but having the wrong footwear will literally change your outcome of the day. By the end of the day, I was like, okay, I'm ready to be out of these boots. The next thing that I was not prepared for was the bag itself. Like in nothing like nothing against like the backpack or anything like that. What I mean was when I was shooting, when I'd get my bow and I'd lift it up and raise it up, up and down all day. And even though you only maybe shoot like, you know, I think grand total, I think all the targets were probably about like 40 or 50 targets. And you're only shooting one arrow at a time at these targets. So, you know, 50 shots, you're saying, oh, I can shoot 50 shots, no problem. Same, I thought the same thing. However, adding, you know, I think this bag all, all my stuff put in it added maybe about 10 pounds. That 10 pounds, multiple times a day, taking and holding your, your bow and you're up and you're getting ready to shoot, you don't realize at the end of the day how sore you will be. Like I am very sore in my shoulders from that, just that action of, you know, getting ready to shoot. Put, oh yeah, I can, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> but having to, to shoot my, my bow and, you know, holding that, those, those 10 pounds, it makes a huge difference, especially after all day shooting. So really I was not prepared for the physical exercise of, of shooting at a 3D event. So if you're going to go to those things, you need to one, be in pretty decent walking shape just because you don't know the environment. Two, if you are going to be carrying something, you should probably carry it beforehand. Uh, you know, even if you go out and you're hiking around with it, go outside, go to the range, go go shoot your bow with your hunting gear. And that's one of the things that they always say. Don't, don't just shoot at the range. Shoot the way you will hunt. Um, that is something that I need to work on. That is something that I need to do as well. Now, the last thing I wasn't prepared for was probably all of my, my gear set up. Uh, there was definitely things that I, I learned from not, not walking around with the bow, not walking around with my bag. I was not prepared on the fact of like, I have the bag and I feel comfortable walking around with it in like a, in an environment that's not super, you know, doesn't have a whole bunch of different terrain. Uh, I, you know, with me shooting it with all of my gear, all of the other little things, it, I was not really prepared for that. It made a huge difference for me to, to actually go out and start shooting with, with it. And by the end of the day, I kind of had a little bit more of a feel for it. But my first couple shots, I probably, I probably dropped a couple points that if I had prepared more for it, I probably could have gotten it. So I was not prepared for the actual aspect of shooting. 
Now, the last thing, which it kind of depends on your course and your day and something that you can definitely do with anything is I wasn't actually looking at the targets a whole bunch before I actually shot them. Going into it, you know, I've seen targets. I've seen, like, I've mainly shot on this little deer, you know, a couple times. Uh, you know, I've maybe shot probably, I want to say, like, three or four times. There's probably, like, 200, mm, maybe about 100 arrows into it, if that. Uh, I was not prepared for looking at different targets. Uh, different targets where, you know, the scoring, you know, if you are doing, like, the scoring practices, uh, you do need to go and see where the targets are at. Uh, not everything that I've seen with the targets, you know, they're, they're in a little bit different spots. So really going up and examining the targets of where to shoot, that will make a huge difference. Uh, that was one of the things that as I had started going throughout the day, I was like, oh man, I thought the target was right here, but it wasn't like, like on this target, it does a pretty deep, like my 3D target is nothing, like it's not a super high end target to say the least. However, I will be shooting at the spot where the core is at, you know? And so depending on what 3D target you can shoot at, like maybe like the Morel target, where there's a whole bunch more foam that you can replace, that will give you a lot more accurate areas for you to shoot at, right? On this target right here, I think that the the lungs and heart are just a, one. They're a little bit smaller uh, on this target, but where I was actually shooting for some of my my shot placements, I was either way too far forward or way too high or way too low. I was actually missing some points when I was shooting just because I didn't know what the target's good spots were. So, if you're going to go out and shoot at these targets. Do some research, even if it's just the day of, walk the course really fast, see where the targets are at, see what to expect when shooting each target, uh, or just go up to the target and say, hey, this this is where the good zone uh, placements of the, you know, your 10s, 12s, 8s, 5s, whatever it may be, go up and just look at the target. I was not prepared for that, and that, that kind of hurt me a little bit. So we've talked about things that I, I'm glad I took. Uh, I'm talked about things that I was not prepared for. And the last thing that I think we need to talk about is how to continue to prepare for these things. So the first thing that I think you should really prepare for is further distances. Uh, I had mainly shot in a range that the max distance was like 30, 30 yards. So I was very comfortable with the targets that were like between the 20s and maybe like 35 those ones I could hit no problem but with the targets that you know were maybe like the 40s and 50s where I'd maybe I shot the 40s a couple times uh but the 50s I think the first time I actually shot 50 yards was last video it really was something I was not prepared for to shoot so I think that if you're actually going to go and shoot some of these events, you need to go and actually practice some of these further distances. I will say though, having a slider sight does make it a little bit easier. Uh, you know, I think I only dropped one shot uh, all of yesterday, which I'm very happy about, but there were some really close calls on some of them uh, at those further distances. Like there was one that was at like 63 yards um, and I shot and I, I, I moved my bow as I, I shot it and I shot right at the very top of where like the spine would be and it was barely maybe an inch below like into the foam because if not it would have just shot right over the target. Uh, that, that just comes down to practice of uh, those further distances, learning how to hold your bow at further distances. Will I probably hunt like that? No, but for something like this, it is kind of nice to know, you know, the limitations of myself of where I can and can't shoot. I think the one target that I dropped though, uh, the target was at 70, I think it was like 78 yards. Uh, I shot just underneath it. So having these practices of distances that are, you know, a little bit further away, I'll just make it a lot more consistent for when you're actually shooting. And that is one thing I will say about having this deer this deer with its form factor it is a lot smaller than probably 
90% of all of the targets that were out there yesterday, it's, it's a lot smaller. So when I actually get out there, it will be a little bit more comforting, I guess, to know that I've, I've been practicing on a target that is a little bit smaller, which is also why I like this Morel target, uh, because it will allow me to practice at, you know, shooting these little white dots, uh, at those long ranges. So yeah, but practicing with, with the further distances will really make you feel comfortable showing up to these things. The next thing I'll probably be practicing will be having targets at angles. Now there wasn't a lot of targets here that I had to shoot down or up, you know, that that's one thing that I felt very fortunate because I've never really done that. But going into this next upcoming shoot that they're gonna have here in a couple of weeks, they're going to be a lot more hilly. And so I need to take the time to go and actually practice shooting downhill at these further targets, just so I can say, oh, I feel pretty comfortable actually shooting those distances. So that means I need to make sure my, my, my third axis is really good. Uh, there's a video that just came out from Levi Morgan on how to adjust that. Uh, I will link his video because I think if you don't, uh, if you aren't aware of how to shoot third axis, it's going to make it a little bit difficult and you might not like as much. And so far from what I've practiced with, it made a huge difference. So I will, that is going to be, I think it might be this side, that will be linked over here so that you can actually go and watch that because it makes, it makes a huge difference. And I really appreciate people in the industry that have taken the time to give knowledge to, you know, learners and people who are actually trying to 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 grow as you know time goes by and so yeah i really do appreciate that video from levi morgan now the last thing i will say for me to prepare for these events uh and just hunting in general is just going out and shooting with them. You know, I really want to dial in, you know, my bow a little bit better. I want to dial in, you know, the pack configuration. So when I'm actually out there, it feels way comfortable. It's not going to fatigue me after a while. Uh, but shooting with, you know, my jacket on and the boots and all the other little things, because when hunting time comes around, I want to be in the most prepared mindset possible and one of those things is just going to come down to my gear how am i going to configure it do i want to be the the person that oh hunting season comes up and suddenly i have only shot you know with just my normal clothes that's not what i want so i'm actually going to start shooting a lot more with these clothes to to just go out and see and and test out because that is my number one fear is not being prepared for when the opportunity of hunting season comes up that I won't be ready for. And if I keep doing what I'm doing and practicing and practicing and practicing, I will feel a lot more confident in my abilities. So yeah, being comfortable with my gear will make a huge difference. Uh, I think that's basically it for this video. So yeah, this is just some stuff that I learned. This is stuff that I, I'm grateful for that I had, and I am gonna start practicing more with further distances. So probably what some of my videos are gonna be is going to be the distance shooting, me practicing, things I'm learning, uh, other tweaks, and yeah, that, that will be a, a ton of fun. So some other announcements of things that I'm gonna start doing. I actually have reached out to a bunch of hunting companies uh, to ask them about why they do what they do and their products. So I'm really excited to start doing a couple interviews. I've had some people reach back. One of them is actually from St. Anthony where I'm actually at here in Southern Idaho. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to go and start interviewing stuff and learning about why they do it. And I wanted to start in my home state, you know, this is, this is where I'm from. This is the people that I love and cherish. And so to, to learn that there's people that are in the hunting industry uh, or the outdoor industry that are trying to make changes and, you know, they see a need for some product that is just super inspiring. And I know some of you have, some of you know this, I work in juvenile corrections and I want to inspire the youth that I work with because they are the future of everything, you know, and I really care about their futures. I care about who they are and their, 
you know, their dreams and goals. And this, these little interviews will be very goal oriented. And yeah, so I, I'm really excited to, to talk about this. I'm really excited to, to learn and share and realize why these, these hunting industry companies do what they do. And I want to know their goals for what they have for the future, because I think knowing the goals of people makes a huge difference. That is the whole purpose of this channel. This is about me learning and having goals I'd never thought I would accomplish. And now I'm starting to feel more comfortable in accomplishing them. So yeah, I'm very excited for that little bit. Uh, I will, you know, I will be letting you guys know what I'm going to do. And if you guys do have suggestions of people that might be interested in doing this, I would love to talk with them. I love to hear about people's stories in the hunting industry. I'm very excited for that part. So be, be watching for those. Uh, I'm gonna start doing some interviews on that. And yeah, no, I'm super excited. So thank you for sticking around to this point of the video. I will be actually taking some time and, and shooting and uh, going through some of my thought processes as I'm going to start shooting, but that's, you know, that's at the very end of the video. It's kind of something a little bit different, but yeah. So thank you. But yeah, this is Dylan Late Season Hunter. Follow me on Instagram at Late Season Hunter, TikTok, Late Season Hunter. Uh, I will be trying to do, I might try and get onto Twitter. I haven't done that, or I guess it's now X. Uh, I will be trying to post more. I do want to take and post some more photos and videos of the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, no, this has just been another video of me learning and growing. And so, yeah, uh, stick around if you'd like, but if not, this is Dylan Laces and Hunter and I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye guys. Okay. So just so you can kind of see what I'm wearing, I do have my jacket on. I did leave my gloves in the car just cause it's a little bit warm out, but this is what I wore yesterday. I did have different pants on, but I did put on my gaiters. So yeah, but this is basically what it was. I'm going to show you some of the, the stuff the spaces that I was actually pretty comfortable with first. Uh, I'll first come back to 40 yards. I marked it out uh, yeah, right here. Uh, so this is 40 yards uh, to the target. I'll shoot it and then we'll move back to the 90. But 40 is like a pretty good starting spot where I, th I feel pretty comfortable shooting. So yeah, let's, let's try 40 yards first. Double check with my range finder. Okay, it is saying 39.5, 39.9, so about 40. Okay, 40 yards, my sight in there. Let's give her a go. a touch high where I'm shooting but yeah not too bad of a shot just a little bit high so but this this target does a really good job at stopping like if you are looking at a budget 3d target this shooter buck super good it did stop it like I said I was just a touch high just outside of the foam that I need to be shooting in but I mean it stopped it there was just a little bit like this this foam right here where the core's at it's definitely a little bit denser than, than this foam, but yeah, there's barely, there's just a little tip, barely sticking out. So yeah, but just a little high on that shot. I did forget my arrow puller in my car, which luckily this target isn't crazy dense. Okay, so I moved back the camera. This is now, 55 yards and this was a pretty common shot basically 50 to 60 and so yeah let's double check so 55 4 drop that down and this makes me nervous because this is a lot smaller of a target than what I was shooting before. Now I'm gonna start getting some little bit of wind variance. That's really gonna start to make a, a different play. So let's give her a go. Whew. And 
I feel like that was a great shot. So I just checked the camera and it was slightly out of focus, but not enough that I, I worry about, you know? But that was an awesome shot at 55 yards. Oh man, like it's just a half hair high. But oh my gosh, it like, it's right. Yeah, it's literally, I can't put my thumb in between the arrow uh, and the heart on the smaller target. So to shoot that at 55 yards, super awesome. So right here, so right here, and you can see the deer clear in the background over there. So right here, so right here, and you can see the deer clear in the background over there. It's got a slight slope to it. This is 75, let's see. Seventy-eight yards. This is the furthest distance that I shot at yesterday, and so uh, it's it's a crazy shot, you know. Especially if you think I'm going to be shooting at ninety-one yards. Uh, yeah, no. So uh, yeah, let's shoot at seventy-eight and see how we do on a much, much, much smaller target. So uh, yeah, I'm nervous. Here goes my seventy-eight. Yard shot. There's a little bit of a wind drift. So let's see where I get this. Oh, just a touch high of where I was shooting. Oh man. 78 yards just in the upper part of the deer. Hopefully the camera got that. I don't think the camera did, because I'm in the way. But I'm gonna zoom in with the camera so you can see. Oh my gosh. Of where it need to be. But probably above it by know, maybe five inches. So definitely a lot better than what I thought I'd do. At 90, or sorry, 78 yards. Sweet. Well, let's see what happens if I put it at 90. Okay. So, you can barely see it with this slope, but the deer is down there at 91 yards. This is what people were shooting at as the final one. And I've never done this before. This is the longest shot I've ever taken with my bow. Double check. Range this. Ninety one seven. Yeah, ninety one seven. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. 91, about right there. A little bit more wind coming in. Luckily, yeah, we'll see. We should be able to get this. I missed, I missed. I went just low of it. Trying this one more time. Hopefully I can do this because I just lost an arrow. I'll try and find it more in a sec, but didn't want to get too far away from the camera. Okay. I got this. Did not hit it again. So, all right. Okay, so I'm just leaving. Uh, I was out there for a little bit longer shooting. Both of my cameras died and I had batteries back in my car, but it's a little bit of a trek to get back there. But uh, yeah, so I had 
found one of the two arrows, kind of a bummer. I didn't get both, but hey, at least I can walk away with only missing one. So, but that's the video guys. Uh, I do want to say thank you if you did stick around all the way to the very end. Uh, it means a lot to me. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you again. So.